the comedian was nominated for the prestigious award last year, but lost out to Samuel Johnson. His project co-hosts Gary Bickmore and Waleed Ali each won a gold logie in the two years prior. Voting is now open for this year's Logie Awards, but in a Q plus A with news.com.au to promote his new stand-up show, Big Boy Pants, Hurley said that, if he were to actually be nominated, and go on to win this year it would ruin a comedic narrative. B. Be honest, Pete, how much would a gold Logie win mean to you, B? I'm just tearing up at the thought of it laughs. It's just an honor to be on the long list of people who could be nominated. I think it's got Wilkinson written all over it to be honest. I hope Lisa wins it. I think she deserves it, and I was genuinely surprised she wasn't nominated last year. Also, if he doesn't win, it serves a comedian narrative that we have picked up on. Obviously I was in a position where my two colleagues had won the two last gold logies. As a comedian it was just too much of a gold mine not to have some fun with that and to continue to have some fun. If I were to win one it would take some of that fun away. B. Did you have an acceptance speech written in case you did win the gold logie last year, B? I had some points, but it wasn't written down. It dawned on me the day leading into it that, if I did win it, it needed to be funny. I couldn't just get up and be too sincere about the whole thing. I had a few zingers that I was looking forward to getting out if the time came, but they're in ashes now. B. You mentioned Lisa Wilkinson just before. How did you find out that she was joining the project team, B? I got a call from Beverly McGarvey, Network 10's chief content officer, saying that Lisa was joining the project when I was at home, and I was thrilled. My wife was in the bath and I ran in and said, Lisa is joining the project. Lisa and I exchanged text messages not long after, but before she started we were both in Hawaii, and we caught up. It was really lovely to spend some time with her and bring her up to speed with how the day-to-day -day of the project works. B. You've had some amazing guests on the project in the last few years. Who would be your favorite, B? Last year my dad gave me a gift, where he had taken photos off the TV screen of me on camera with different people. He wanted to make sure I was documenting the people I met. He got a few names wrong though. I think he had Matt Damon down as Alec Baldwin. The one guess that was probably the best, and is the screensaver on my phone, is when I went to Tokyo late last year to interview Mark Hamdill. That was a standout. B. Is there a guest you've had on the project that stands out as the worst, B? We're pretty lucky. Our biggest weapon is our live audience. When they get to us and see our audience they come to life and they know they can't cheat and they have to bring it. Often if you're a performer, you rise to that. Amy Schumer was brilliant on our show, absolutely came to life, she smashed it, and then we started hearing that other news outlets had trouble with her. B. Do you have a pre-show ritual that you do every night before the project, B? I usually always say to the other hosts as late as I can just before the cameras go on, back quote it's just TV, but good luck everyone. Also, our studio audience loads really late, just five minutes, before we go on air. I get two minutes with them, and I give them a pep up speech. I'm not sure if that's superstitious or strategic. What do you say to them, B? I tell them that I already feel as if they're the greatest audience we've ever had which is always awkward when there are people who have been in the audience before. I also have a favorite joke that I do after the show on a Monday night when Steve Price runs out to do his radio show. I always tell the audience that he has to leave because he has a lap dance book down the road at 8 p.m. I always time it so Pricey is just out of the studio so he can hear it, but he's running too late to do anything about it. B. You've been touring your new stand-up show, Big Boy Pants, at the Adelaide Fringe and you're taking it to the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. What's it about, B? It's about taking responsibility. When I was trying to think about what to talk about in the show and what to call it, I had just had a vasectomy which is about taking responsibility. 
and also more and more people wanted to know my opinions on real issues because of my involvement with the project, kind of forgetting that I'm just a comedian that sits at the kids' end of the table. So they're the two main springboards for the show. B. Do you make any jokes about your project co-hosts in the stand-up show? B. Warped, Kerry and Lisa are all referenced. I've always resisted the temptation of being a comedian on TV, who just talks about being a comedian on TV. I do try to keep that separate. But this year there is a purpose, when I talk about how the project has affected my real life. The Lisa references, when I talk about paid parity, and the Waleed and Kerry references, when I talk about being live on air and they ask me a question that I'm not ready for, and the reaction that they might get from me. B. You've also just released your new children's book, Frankie Fish and the Great Wall of Chaos, after the first one was a big success B. We couldn't have imagined how big they would be, and to see kids dressing up as the characters for book week, and sending their reviews in, and it becoming part of school curriculum in some instances. It's pretty staggering. B. You can check out Peter Hellyer's tour dates for big boy pants here. And you can catch him on the Project Weeknights at 6.30pm on 10B.